Hello and welcome back to Fantasy Star Online Episode 2, where today we're going from the central control area to the seaside area. So let's get going. That's why I told you central control area was a long zone. Because it's got a bunch of sub zones. Just everywhere. All right, so that'll give us the information on the enemies here, specifically the geese. Seems regular foey has a longer range than Hildebear's cane foey. But that's fine. Hildebear's cane foey costs less. I have no idea what I just picked up, but it was something. I wonder. Nope. Okay, I think it's Gifoe time. A few too many geese for my tastes. So what the heck did I pick up earlier? Must have been something I already had some of. So this particular beach here is one of the fields that you can fight things in in PSO Episode 3. Not sure whether I like or hate the sand walking sound. It's one of those sounds where it's like, oh yeah, I kind of like that, but also I kind of super don't. It's not one of those purely satisfying sounds, that much I could say for sure. I forgot that big traps existed. Kinda sucks not having monomates. Oh, hey. That's two of those that we've found before finding a cow to talk to about it. Does that mean that I've potentially been missing some in other areas as well? Like, could there have been one by that healing ring we didn't get in the forest area? But we haven't missed any message logs by the numbering. So, maybe not? Maybe this place is just special? Get out of here. Hi, Ellie. Mm. Yeah, they were doing shady things. All right, let's learn about the geese. Oh. Well, that's more than I expected to see. Yep, 
Yep. Ah, yes, the Geek U. The queen of the geese. Alright, so this is still off limits. Oh, no, it's not. Alright, so this will be the Sinnoh Barrel and Spagil. Well, that's not good. Mm-hmm. All right. Maybe. Talking about the optical camouflage on the Sinnoh units. Also traps, I guess. Does that mean that I just haven't been paying enough attention and it's possible to see the invisible traps before tripping them? Gibbons are fine, but Zol Gibbons cannot be suffered to live. Hey, you go away. Okay, we need more than, right? It's not ice that we use against them. It's ice that they use against us. Okay. Out of here. More geese. I do like how much farther our fluids are stretching. It's very nice. Feels good. Looks like there's only one direction for us to go, and it ain't that one. Oh, hi there. Here, have some ice. I wish you weren't invulnerable during your teleport. I also wish I was facing you. There we go. All right. That. We've got far more fluids than we've got mates, so seems prudent to start making regular use of Resta. Kind of annoying that those things take three hits. Oh, hey, look, it's Gigu. Ow! Gotta get rid of these things so that they stop eating up my targeting. Okay, so 43 from that. And that web, it's temporarily invulnerable while it's using it. Okay, 112 from... Oh, it looks like geese are weak to ice, not fire. Dang it, got poisoned.
Okay, so you take 112 from lightning. You take nothing from... Ow! Forgot. You do not hit it while it's got the web out. That is a bad plan. And it gets you harmed. So yeah, ice is 115. That's 112. What's fire? 37. So yeah. Ice. And then lightning. Oh, no, don't. Hey, we got it. So, fun fact, there is exactly one Gigu, one Gibbles, and one Miracle. Or... Maricus, or... Miracle. There's three flavors of that thing. I don't know what circumstances the other two appear under. Yeah, there's only one of each each time you come through the central control area. They have their own rare drops that are, in some cases, very, very rare. Which is rather bothersome if you're trying to get their rare drops. And some of their rare drops are incredibly rare to begin with, so it takes forever to try and get them on the harder difficulties. Like, some of their ultimate mode drops for certain section IDs are very, very good. But good luck if you ever want to see one. We're talking, like, less than 1 in 100 drop rates on enemies that only show up once per trip here. It's a little unreasonable. But such is the case with early online games, I suppose. So where is this going to lead me? Oh, just right back here. Cool. Why did that exist? Well, Seaside was short and sweet, which means we get to actually go to the central control area today. Let's just confirm. Yeah, that's an open gate. Hi, Ellie. I did. All right, let's see what we got. Nothing new here. But I had no knowledge of this facility until I was brought here. I was transferred to this island far from the central dome, surface and the seabed. The island is one giant laboratory. All of the top scientists from Pioneer One were there waiting for me. Dr. Osto, of course, and even Dr. Graves, the photon engineer. This was all part of their plan. Soon the experiments began on my body. I don't know the details, but the research seemed to span many areas. And from the look on Osto's face, the results were fairly positive. But then, I heard news of another sub-life form outbreak from the ancient ship. It was still alive. Now that I think about it, the concept of death doesn't apply to it. We just didn't understand. That is why the ancients have kept it sealed inside that spaceship deep beneath the surface of this planet. Mysterious photons, an eternal life form. Now I can see why all the doctors were so excited. Yeah, that's a thing. Dark Falls revives itself. Back. Don't just jump out of nowhere like that. Okay. Be neat if I could like use a trap vision to see the Sinnoh barrels before we make them visible by hitting them.
Okay, so... Yeah, central control area is fairly straightforward, I suppose. Most of it, we just go along this path towards that tower in the distance. Dodging traps. Occasionally we get warped down to that little lower ledge there. But it's still mostly a straight line. Apparently the boxes aren't really super worth it. Oh, what's this? Why? It's nothing. And as you might imagine, most of the enemies we're going to encounter are Sinnoh units. Be they Barrel or Spagil. Though apparently Zold Gibbons can also hop on up here. Which is awful because I, I don't want to deal with them, ever. No, why would you hit the box? Why would you ever hit the box? Fine, I'll use Trimates. It's that or Star Atomizers, and Star Atomizers are harder to come by. Please don't freeze me anymore. Sort of things. Okay, let's deal with Zol Gibbons before we get frozen again. I see some Sinnoh units. Oh no! Oh good, we weren't frozen inside the reach of the things. Yes, zap the monkeys. Still another Sinnoh unit over there. Still another Gibbon. Yeah, get where I can zap you and stay where I can zap you. Wonder if we're gonna find any Spagels anytime soon. Are they rare? Or is it just that they don't, like, rare spawns? Or do they just not appear often? Okay, they just don't appear often. Yeah, Sinnoh Spagels, they got the neat red shoulders. I don't know what else they do that's neat, but... 76, 78, 152. Okay, fire for the Spagels. Oh, they can heal themselves. Not by too much, though. Some of that. Use some of this. Why did my cane get unequipped? I didn't die. Did I? Oh, I was using the gun to deal with a trap or something, wasn't I? Alright, that's that one taken care of. Still another Sinnoh unit over there. Is that the only one still here? Looks like it. Oh, Spigel. Oh, got another barrel. Oh, there's the Spigel down. Alrighty. Wait a minute. Do these guys make me put away my weapon when they slap me? 
I think they might make me put my weapon away when they slap me. I don't like that. That's... Well, it's also kind of amusing, but... Mechanically, I'm not a fan. Quite the lovely little waterfall we got here. Yep. Ow. Yep. He slapped my weapon out of my hands. Ow. There we go. So now we can run through here. Hey, it's the boss. Yeah, central control area itself is also pretty short. We didn't actually have any warps down to the lower platform. That's interesting. Also, you'll note that there's another tower over there and a tower over there. Two towers. They matter for online quests, at least. I wonder if the East Tower and West Tower quests are available in PSO Episode 1 and 2+. plus. Because they were, like, the quests that people farmed a lot for Episode 2 stuff. Yeah. Hi, Ellie. Alright, do we have any additional info? Nothing here. And nothing here. So... Do I want to go fight the boss as I am now? Because we've almost got a Photon Blast ready. I've got Trimates and Star Atomizers. Got plenty of fluids. Yeah, I think we can handle it. Time for a very neat boss design. Gal Griffin. And we are temporarily invulnerable. If memory serves, this thing gets torn apart by Gizonde. We'll have to figure that out. Come here. Well, couldn't see how much damage we did. 46, that's not much. Also, we gotta avoid these tornadoes. Boy, Gal Griffin, land. Allow me to hit you. Okay, uh, that's one way. Uh, have some of this. Ow. All right, that was escape doll. I don't know how much damage we're doing with that, but uh, let's do this. So 46, 98, question mark. Maybe fire is it. All right, let's do some of that. Okay, not quite as much as I was hoping to see. Does this thing just have, like, crazy resistances or something? I do know that we should definitely be at a higher level, considering its damage output. Okay, 110. Ice. Yep. Ice is the way. 
Just spam it all, and I am glad we were safe in between its tusks there. Ow! Okay. Note to self. Make sure health is topped off at all times. I forget whether you can, like, break the tusks. I might be thinking Monster Hunter. Or maybe that was, like, a mechanic that they added. I don't even remember. They definitely don't seem to be taking hits. So I'm assuming we can't break them. I wish this boss's fight design was as nifty as its visual design. When did my cane get put away? For reals, when did my cane get put away? Did it get put away by that one tornado just now, or was it earlier and I just hadn't noticed? I wish we could hit more parts with that. Okay, mag please. Oh, our mag didn't save us. I guess we'll return to Pioneer 2. Cool. I've got no scape dolls, and it can one-shot me with that stomp. I have an idea. So. Uh, customize. We don't need these. We need... These. Right, I've got no money right now. Spent most of my money on leveling the mag, as you can see. But we've got enough that it should last us for, like, the rest of the game. Don't need any of that. So, monomates are good. They can help us keep topped off without any huge expenditure of resources. Shouldn't have bought trimates. That was a bit of a waste. Those for the mag. Yeah, you got anything? Nothing worthwhile. Okay, time to put away the money. Kinda wish I had put a pipe down next to the boss. That's fine, we can have a nice little leisurely stroll through the central control area. And I'm gonna have to make sure that my Jelen and DeBand stay up. Cause yeah, they're gonna be what keep me from getting one really. Cause yeah, I don't wanna get one shot. I super don't. Uh, right, I was gonna sort automatically. And while we're at it, so regular Zonde isn't worth it, but Gizonde might still be. It might hit multiple parts. Foey, not super worth. Uh, how does Gibarda compare to Barda? Okay, so it's two and a half times more expensive. And I doubt we can freeze the griffin, so Gibard is probably not worth it. Foey versus Rafoey. I mean, Rafoey costs three times as much. Does not do three times the damage. Yeah, I think we're good as we are. Let's give this a shot. So, Deband is up. Our defense is increased, hopefully to a degree that we can't get one shot. I forgot to put a pipe down. Ow.
All right, Gal Griffin. How much is my defense right now? 143. I don't know whether that's before or after the, the, the band, but it's definitely one of the two. Yep. So we just need to make sure that these buff and debuffs stay up. Gotta keep an eye on them. Okay, that tickled a little. Am I hitting multiple parts? I don't even know. That's hitting multiple parts. And since it's doing 46 per hit. Okay! Shifta and. or uh, Jelen and Deband are uh, not enough. Why did I hit? No. Okay, um. I gotta stay farther away from it. That's what I have come up with for my strategy. Stay far, far away. Is my mag hungry? Good. Also, it'd be nice if my mag was reviving me. Gonna need five more moon atomizers. I got no money. Also, it's gonna be like seven minutes before I can feed it all those moon atomizers. What am I even doing with my life? Time to go back on through. At least it's not a long walk. And the seabed's gonna be harder still. Especially its boss. I might have to go through hard mode episode one before I'm even remotely ready for it. Yeah, this is where things start actually matching the difficulty that I remember in episode two. And unless my gear and or stats improve dramatically, we are not prepared. Okay. Just gotta get past some more laser fences of people detecting stuff. All right, back to the cliffs of Galdaval. Now, it's possible our demand had worn off like right before we took the hit. I don't know. What I do know is I'm going to keep applying the band and Jelen, because even if it doesn't protect us from the one attack, it'll protect us from the other attacks. And having at least some defense to fall back on seems like a good plan. Okay. So it is Jelland. Now we need it to land. And then we need to, like, Gizonde it from as far away as we can. I'm going to cast another Deband just to be safe. I have no idea how long it lasts. I have no idea how many parts I'm hitting. It looks like just one. Just one isn't enough. But whatever. We're far enough away that it's not hitting us with its... Okay, it is hitting us with its Mega Stomp. Does that do less damage when you're farther out, or what? Now that's definitely hitting multiple parts. Ow. Let's re-up the Jelen. Okay, flying again. Oh, our Deband wore off. 
Gotta keep that up. So yeah, given the timing, I think it probably was that our Deband wore off right before the Mega Stomp. So maybe we cast Deband as soon as it lands each time. Gelin as well, just to make sure that they stay up. Because yeah, as long as I'm not one-shot, I can handle it. Alright, it's doing the little horn zappies, but we're nowhere near the horns. Or the zappies, for that matter. And if we're hitting three parts with our uh, Gizonde, then that means we're doing more damage than Barda. Just three parts, that's it. And it looks like we are hitting, like, face, foot, and wing here. Hey, we lived. Barely. I don't trust that we can live through all of those. I need to come up with a better strategy. Do I really just want a Barda from, like, max range? Except even from max range, that Mega Stomp would still hit us. So is it just, like, wait for it to land Barda, like, three times, then run away? Is that what we do? Okay, let's give you some of that. Well, hey, that was not horrible damage that we took. And we're hitting it. No idea how much health it has. Though I can say Barda at max range is not far enough away that the Mega Stomp misses us. Chill and War off. Gotta make sure that stays up. So does it just do less damage if we're farther away, or what? Like, I don't know if we're surviving because distance or because... Jelen and the band. Maybe it's a combination of both. I don't know. Let's keep that to band up. Certainly not hurting our chances at survival. Please come where I can smack you. Please let me let me target the part that chains to other parts. Okay, we survived again. All right, getting multiple parts, getting no parts. Mag made us temporarily invulnerable. If you want it to stomp again? Now is the time. Oh, hey, we got it. Only took three tries. Cal Griffin's neat. I like the design. Don't like the combat so much. Just tried to attack the box. Forgot that I had removed the attack button from my bar. A mace. That's a new name. And yet, it's not helpful to us because... We've already got the Hildebear's Cane. Ooh, hyperframes. We can find a nice green hyperframe with a slot or two. That would be lovely. Let's grab that Moon Atomizer. Yeah, if I could get a hyperframe with two slots, that would be phenomenal. But even one slot would be an upgrade over the solid frame we're wearing. Yeah, I don't know why I'm bothering to check the uh, weapons. They're basically never going to be something useful to us ever again. 
You got info on the Gal Griffin for me? Hi, Ellie. Yeah, neither can I. Okay, but like... Okay, nothing in here. Unless... Yeah, no, that's still just the Sinnoh. And no message either. Here, I was hoping we'd get some tasty little love art bits, but nope. Guess we just gotta go back home. Maybe it'll have info for us when we go to the seabed. So, what do you got? Okay. All right. Really? Worm type? Oh, right, because things that have been made to evolve by Derole, the worm. Got it. Yeah, that's what A-beasts are. Yep. Got it. Does it? Oh. Who knows? What's up, Ellie? Thanks. Fine. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of need to gain some levels before I continue the mission. Well, it would be worrying, but probably for the better, considering the kinds of experiments going on there. So yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. We are absolutely not going to the seabed today. And I'm probably going to take some time, not sure off camera or on camera, probably off camera, but we'll see, going through episode one on hard mode to raise my levels so that I can even stand a chance against the boss of the seabed, because we are absolutely underleveled, even if we've got a Hildebear's Cane and a max level mag. I'm going to need some more levels and HP under my belt if I am to be able to survive. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Worst case scenario, if I'm not ready to go by the time this episode has gone live, we might start episode three a little early to give me some time. We'll see. Either way, see you next time in this when we're going to the seabed and I'll be a higher level. Because, yeah, that's, that's a useful thing. See you then, friends.